connective tissue proper. We want to describe uh, each type of connective tissue and explain a little bit why it's found in a different locations. We want to list the different uh, cells, fibers, and other extracellular components of connective tissue. And we want to relate the functions of connective tissue to the structural organization uh, of that tissue where it's found. Enjoy. Hello, I'm Larry Johnson, and I'll be talking about connective tissue. We want to describe each of the different types of connective tissue and explain where they're found. List some the cells, fibers, other extracellular major components in connective tissue. And to relate the function of connective tissue to their structural organization. Now the function of a connective tissue is several fold. One, it provides mechanical support. It's a stroma below the epithelium. Here we see epithelium of the epidermis and the connective tissue stroma of the dermis is what lies below and provides uh, support. It also has a metabolic exchange. The vascular beds, uh, here we can see some of those vascular beds, provide nutrients to epithelium on the surface as well as the connective tissue itself. Also, adipocytes store fat. So, metabolic exchange again, fat exchange. You have the inflammation occurs. Uh, this is the battleground for the immune system uh, to react to antigens maybe coming in or or bacteria or whatever. So it's a battleground for uh, the immune system to act. It also is involved with uh, fibrosis. Fibrosis is wound healing or it could be overproduction of the collagen material. Now there are different types of connective tissue. Today we'll be talking about uh, connective tissue proper with a little bit of mucous connective tissue which is actually uh, part of connective tissue with special properties like hematopoiesis and special properties. And later on we'll be talking about cartilage and bone independent. But today we're gonna to talk about the general connective tissue which could be loose, that is there's a lot of cells and not much fibers or it could be dense, and dense because it has lots of fibers and a few cells. And sometimes those fibers and cells are arranged regularly, dense connective tissue, and also irregularly. Irregularly would be in the capsule or in the dermis, for example. So all the types of connective tissue we'll be talking about, uh, mesenchymal cells, mesenchymal connective tissue are just fibroblastic-like cells, look like fibroblasts, this is a nucleus we're seeing with a little bit of cytoplasm. There's also fat cells which look like chicken wire. Uh, this is a nucleus, but this is a fat drop that's inside there. That's white fat. Brown fat would be different. And then there's loose connective tissue, lots of cells and not many fibers. Then there's reticular connective tissue where you have reticular fibers, and we'll talk about that later on. Dense regular connective tissue where there's lots of fibers and the cells are lined up and fibers are lined up in a straight line like a tendon or a ligament. Uh, and then there's also elastic connective tissue and here we can see the elastic fibers in there and we will find those of course in blood vessels, especially arteries that we will find. And then there's a mucous connective tissue which is just a light connective tissue. If we look at the terminal portion of the ileum, we can see epithelial cells on the surface and the connective tissue below. This connective tissue is a lamina propria and it's composed of a lot of cells. We see lots of cells in through there and that makes this loose connective tissue. That is more cells and less fibers. Note the abundance of cells that we see there, lots of cells that we see there and the low density of fibers. We see some spaces there, but few fibers do we see. Compare that to the tendon that we see here, which is dense, regular connective tissue, and here we can see few cells and lots of fibers that we, go through, that we see there. Few cells, but a lot of fibers, and these fibers are arranged regularly, all in one direction because of the stress is coming from the uh, muscle to the attachment of the bone, all in one direction. Cells of connective tissue, you have uh, 
undifferentiated mesenchymal cells that we will see. Uh, and these cells give rise to a host of cells, to cells of the, of the bone marrow, of the cells of bone uh, that will see cartilage of bone, even endothelial cells, uh, and macrophages, and fibroblasts. So as a host of cells are connective tissue cells. You've got uh, adipose cells, macrophage, plasma cells, mast cells, and a host of cells. If we look at the ileum again, we can see some eosinophils, a lobulated nucleus and a lot of granules, dark nucleus, as you see is lobulated, but a lot of, of uh, eosinophilic granules. Uh, also, fibroblasts, here we see these long a fibroblast cigar shaped nuclei, a little bit of cytoplasm. Here we see another one, a little bit of cytoplasm uh, in through there. And then surrounding these cells, we see type 1 collagen. Type 1 collagen is what we see bundles, and type 1 collagen vary in size of bundles. Uh, lymphocytes. Here we see a certain host of lymphocytes. Plasma cell. Here we see the nucleus of a plasma cell, spherical nucleus. A lot of cytoplasm around it. These are plasma cells and uh, a mast cell, non-lobulated nucleus, it's an intact nucleus, but big granules, is a mast cell. Again, eosinophil lobulated nucleus with these eosinophil granules, fibroblast, another fibroblast, another one here, another one there, uh, and collagen of fibers that we see there in between the cells. The lymphocytes uh, that we can see is a better lymphocyte than that would be, but there you can get large lymphocytes. Uh, plasma uh, cells uh, is here, and then a mast cell. And if we look at a plasma cell, we see one right here. Uh, that can be identified by the fact it's got a nucleus kind of in it, pretty much in the center uh, of the cell. And the chromatin is cartwheel shaped. Looks like it's got a hub here and then spokes that go out there. A radial pattern that we see. Uh, it's a predominant light clear cytoplasm. Sometimes there, you can see a clear space uh, in the cytoplasm. And here we can see a clear all over around here, which is a uh, Golgi apparatus associated with it. So all this cytoplasm in here is really rough in the plasma reticulum, largely, uh, which is important in producing antibodies is what this cell does. We don't see secretory granules because this cell has is a constitutive secretor. As soon as it produces it, it discharges it, it does not uh, store it very long. Uh, eosinophil, we see a libelated nucleus, eosinophilic granules, and if you look at electron microscopic view of these, you can see there's a crystalline core. So in the side, there's a crystalline core in these large granules. Um, in contrast, we fi see fibroblasts, a cigar-shaped nucleus, as again, as we see here, uh, lots of collagen fibers. This is extracellular. So this uh, fibroblast uh, will be making these collagen uh, fibers that we see longitudinal or cross-section, which are in the extracellular matrix. In the lymph node, we can see macrophages uh, here and here. Here in the spleen, you can see macrophages that have actually phagocytized as carbon in through there. And lamina propria, that is connective tissue in the gut, these are intestinal absorptive cells, there's another macrophage. So macrophage is another one of those cells that you have in the connective tissue. Uh, also in the lamina propria, uh, we can see the macrophages where a characteristic of macrophage, it has different sizes of structures that it phagocytized, so it's various states of digestion. So here's this nucleus, and there is a digested products. Again, nucleus, digested products, a nucleus, digested products, nucleus, digested products. Characteristic of macrophage, it has varying size granules because of the things that are phagocytized at various states of degradation. Now, the uh, macrophage is um, attached to uh, information sites. So in the battleground, in the connected tissue, macrophages are going to be attached. And they will ingest bacteria, dead cells, debris. Here in the lungs, we can see where the macrophages here uh, have uh, ingested dust particles of things that come in through the lungs. Uh, also, in this tattoo, uh, the ink of the tattoo is actually in macrophages uh, in the skin. And then also macrophages 
uh, are involved in the immune uh, process because they present things to the uh, lymphocytes. These are lymphocytes and these are the macrophage. So the macrophage is involved in taking debris, uh, bacteria, whatever, break it down and then give it to the other cells, present it to the other cells. Another cell is the mast cell and here we can see the granules of a mast cell and non libellated nucleus. These are her granules by a certain stain that we were able to see the mast cells or in Taludin in blue we can see the granules in the mast cell very nicely as well. And we'll talk more about mast cells here a little later on. So here's skin, so this is epidermis and the dermis. So the epidermis interacts with the dermis by the reedy pegs of the epidermis interact with the dermal papillae that project up in the epithelium. But what we see there are fibroblasts and collagen fibers, bundles of fibers that are run in different directions. So this is dense, irregular connective tissue, dense because of few cells and lots of fibers uh, that we can see. Now epithelium on the surface is avascular and therefore it cannot get nutrients from the blood. And it must get its nourishment, oxygen, nutrients, metabolites from the connective tissue below. So uh, blood vessels in the connective tissue, blood diffuses, uh, blood components diffuse out, nutrients diffuse out, and then it goes up and then it fuses up into the, the epithelial cells above there. So epithelium avascular, it requires metabolic needs to be met by the connective tissue. Here we see fibroblasts, fat cells, and collagen bundles. Now the collagen as well as other extracellular components are synthesized by fibroblasts. And here we see a fibroblast, there's this nucleus, nucleus with a little bit of cytoplasm on either side. And if you look at that cytoplasm, you can see it indeed has rough neoplasmic reticulum because it's producing protein. One of those proteins is collagen. And here we can see the collagen extracellular so it's producing here, but where the collagen congregates is in the extracellular matrix. So it's on the outside of the cell, but the reflin plasma reticulum is involved in making the proteins, which ultimately ends up to be uh, collagen. You can see the periodicity uh, in longitudinal views of the collagen. So the extracellular matrix are different types. You've got a fibrous type, uh, type one uh, collagen is the main collagen and you can see type 1 collagen fibers vary in size. Some are small, some are long. Type 2 is also fiber forming and you find that in the eye. You also find that in cartilage. Uh, bone has type 1. Cartilage has type 2. Type 3 is a reticular fiber network. It has branching. It's a branching type reticular fibers that branch uh, and they're actually type 3 collagen. Type 1 collagen. Type 3 collagen is reticular fibers. Type 4 uh, is uh, the, the basal lamina. Basal lamina of epithelial cells that we have seen will be PAS positive. At that. So type 4. So if you look at type 1, uh, type 1 you can see the periodicity uh, that, or that is reoccurring uh, striations. Type 1 is flexible. It bends and it has high tensile strength. It's strong. That's what's in a tendon. Doesn't stretch uh, with normal use of a tendon. They're cross-link fibers add stability uh, and it resists collagen digestion. So uh, some of the bacteria would have collagen ACE and, and so collagen ACE will digest the collagen and break it down, let bacteria go through. But the cross-linking uh, tries to prevent that. Exhaler matrix, we had proteoglycan, ground substance, hyaluronic acid, uh, glycosaminoglycans, and here you can see the hyaluronic core with the keratin sulfates, uh, chondroitin sulfate, and a protein core coming off here. So these are the structures that we see in the extracellular matrix. Uh, and the ground substance in there is rich in hyaluronic acid, sulfonated gly glycosaminoglycans, proteoglycans, uh, glycoproteins, water, ions, metabolites, and regular materials you find out in the body will be all in the ground substance surrounding uh, the collagen fibers. And here you can see how the extracellular matrix uh, forms a kind of mesh uh, and binds to uh, the collagen fibers. The ground substance supports, surrounds, and binds to all connective tissue cells and fibers. 
So the ground substance is a, is all around the cells that are uh, in the connective tissue. It facilitates the fusion of nutrients, electrolytes, mineral fluids, waste products. Ground substance also acts as a barrier for pathogens involved in connective tissue. So ground substance is very important uh, in terms of the function. The spleen, a different type of connective tissue, this is uh, dense irregular, that is the collagen fibers are not regularly arranged, is in capsule. You see a capsule here and there, a capsulated structure it has to resist pressure from different directions, that's why it is not, it is irregular. In contrast, tendon uh, is all, stress is all in one direction, and so that's dense regular connective tissue. And here we see the little fibroblast in there and there are lots of connective tissue here, the fibroblast nuclei, uh, and lots of, of uh, collagen, uh, bundles of collagen that you see there. So this is dense because there's few cells, lots of fibers, and it's regular because they're all aligned with, with uh, the tendon. Uh, lymph node, a lymph node has reticular fibers, which are type three collagen fibers. And here we can see the reticular fibers very nicely, and they branch. And those reticular fibers allow lymphocytes to to uh, percolate down through uh, the lymph node. It's kind of like a grapevine. Uh, if you threw a, uh, some golf balls in a grapevine, they would kind of percolate down as they fall through, and that's kind of what lymphocytes do. Uh, another type is uh, elastic fibers, and here we see a nice coil of elastic fibers uh, in a blood vessel. Uh, and there's smooth muscle cells in, or in between there. The presence of elastic fibers in the aorta and other large vessels allow the stretching and the recalling of the vessel during the powerful uh, blood ejection of the ventricle. So it stretches and then it recalls whenever the heart relaxes. Uh, in the kidney, uh, we see a PAS stain. PAS staining uh, um, is staining the basement membrane and epithelium, as you can see around to there. There's also the basement membrane there. But also in between here, we would have the ground substance. All that's ground substance uh, that can be seen in between uh, and surrounding the cells because the kidney is an organ composed of more than one tissue, connective tissue as well as epithelium. Uh, in the umbilical cord, we see an umbilical cord here. There's two arteries and a vein. Uh, now these look very similar uh, less difference between artery and vein than you typically see. That is, artery is usually more vascular wall uh, than in the vein. However, uh, in the umbilical arteries, a more similar in structure because there's less pressure. Low pressure, and so therefore you don't have the buildup of uh, smooth muscle which resists pressure in the arteries that, that you have in the umbilical cord. But also, this has a mucous connective tissue. Uh, which are fine little fibers that are in there. These are the fibroblasts in through there uh, and the serosal lining of it. That brings us to the avian tissue versus serosa. Now in digestive organs, you have some in the peritoneal cavity and some outside. Uh, if you lie on the outside of the peritoneal cavity, uh, they are attached with the avian tissue. Avian tissue firmly attaches things. However, those that are on the, in the peritoneal cavity, run through the cavity itself, are lined with a serosal covering. So the avian tissue provides direct, firm attachment to the surrounding tissues and structures. Serosa is a serous membrane that consists of slick, slimy, uh, simple squamous epithelium from the, uh, called mesoderm. Uh, with connective tissue below. The avian tissue provides a firm attachment uh, while the serosa allows for movement of the organs uh, it covers uh, by providing a slick, slimy surface. Now, you might have seen guts on a live animal uh, moving with paracelsis occurring and the serosa allows it to slap and slide. Another uh, interesting thing is that the mesothelial cells produce fibroblasts, of course, but they also produce endothelial cells. So a certain type of epithelium come from the mesoderm, endothelium. It also produces smooth muscle cells. So fibroblasts 
from the undifferentiated makes smooth muscle cells. And of course, they make fibroblasts as we're talking about. Now this is important because uh, all uh, from the mesenchymal cells self give rise to the three cells that you need to make a blood vessel. Endothelium, fibroblasts, and smooth muscle. So to facilitate making a blood vessel, growth, wound healing, or whatever, the mesenchymal cells are the precursor cells to all the cells that are needed to make a blood vessel to be able to, uh, to grow. Now, in terms of our clinical correlation, we want to talk about anaphylactic shock. And so here we see the mast cells. Here's an electron microscopic view of a mast cell. Connective tissue cells, are, they release uh, heparin and histamine, which acts uh, in the, on the immune system. Uh, the immediate hypersensitivity reaction is what, is what it does. In the highly insensitized individuals, potential fatal traumatic a problem with intermediate hypersensitivity reaction, anaphylactic shock it may occur, the reaction may occur fatal because it may shut the airways or also have cardiovascular effects. And here you can see where the, uh, the swelling of the tongue uh, prevents swallowing to occur um, and you can have a swelling uh, in the throat as well to prevent the individual be able to, to breathe. If you have anaphylactic shock, it could be deadly. At the end, thank you.